This video is brought to you by Java Mountain. Campfire coffee, as strong as all outdoors. Definitely, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this video if I didn't have that coffee. Okay, so let's talk about bows, just bows in general. Um, then I'm gonna get into what I'm doing to this molar gay bed. And it, it's not bad, it's good. If you were to take a yardstick, just an old wooden yardstick or a, piece, a strip of wood, and this isn't, but pretend it is, of constant width and constant thickness and stick a string on it, what you're gonna get is almost all the bend taking place in the center, and then as you get to the tips, less and less and less bend. That's it, video's over. Just kidding, I just. This is how um, basically pyramid bows work and how they work so well. Now take that constant thickness, just, I mean, from the fade where the handle ends and it starts bending, to the tips, and constant thickness of wood, got that? But then have a taper where it's widest near the handle, the fade, and then it gets narrow at the tips. Because it's now tapered just in width, not in thickness, you get a beautiful bend. That's one way to handle it. Now take that yardstick again, that constant piece of wood. Keep it consistent width, but now taper it from, from the thickest part near the handle to the thinnest part near the tips. You will get a nice tillered bow. Aha. More than one way to skin a cat. Now in a lot of our bows, we use a combination of that. It'll be tapered, this is the handle, in width, going down here, and tapered this way. It's a combination. It's not just a single one in the case of the pyramid bow or the case of whatever that bow is that's constant width, which is screw. You don't need to have wide tips, um, but tapered from the handle out here. What you should now understand to grasp, to have it so it's never going to leave your mind, is that first of all, the bow has to taper somehow from the handle to the tips, and that it's not just like a straight curve. It's almost parabolic, if you will. That there is like this decreasing um, deceleration uh, of, of curve and acceleration of leverage as you go from here, the, the fade to the tip. I'm gonna take advantage of that in my quest to remove as much weight from the tips of the smaller gay bed as possible, keeping in mind that it has to taper, you know, from the center to the tips. And also there's a, an increase in leverage that might be a squared function, I don't know, um, the exponential um, dimensions of that. What this amounts to is that when I take the, from the constriction to the tip, because it's going to get a little thicker here and then thin out, it's not going to be just a straight kind of taper. There's actually going to be a curved in, curve involved because I want to remove as much wood as possible. I'll know how much. I'm going to remove so much that it screams, you know, once I get this to the required weight at, you know, the right draw. I don't need to worry about the tillering, the bending of the tips at all. They're going to be stiff. And so I can finish this whole thing and then um, get the final dimensions of the tips. But I can rough them out a little bit. I can rough them out a little bit. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a template. I'm going to create a template um, that allow me just to put it up against the back of the bow and then just scribe it with a pencil or something and then work it down with my rasp. It's going to be a gentle enough curve that I can indeed work it down with that wide flat farrier's rasp quickly. You'd be surprised. I was thinking at first hickory would work hard, but the farrier's rasp, the high carbon steel, Italian steel, the Belota farrier's rasp, you know, re removes wood like a, like a beaver on meth, a crack beaver. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Luan, my quarter inch mahogany plywood, and I'm gonna mark out the length of my tips. I just have like a line here and a line here, just that simple. I am going to take there somewhere those little little copper flashing nail things and estimating and guesstimating. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive them into the Luan. Now I'm gonna take this thing. Now I'm going to put, I want to have kind of, you know, a compound taper kind of a thing, a curve, 
I'm going to put the thin part of this because this tapers right here and my nails are more more or less centered where I've got tip and then the, be the beginning of the, the tip and then the center. I'm going to align this and stick it on this board like thus forming a curve. You see, and you can do this with it, anything. You could make the side um, views of the, the limbs. You can like have more than one nail to get compound curves and stuff like that. This is a this is a joy to do this and create templates for bows. You can do the whole bow like this. You could do a paddle bow, whatever. But I have my tip represented right here. I've got this piece of um, stuff, scrap from redoing the bathrooms in the nature center. Take my pen and gently without putting so much side pressure, I'm gonna distort my curve. Describe that. Nice dark line, nice dark thin line. Remove this. And before your eyes, I have created a curve, nice smooth curve. If there are any ganks in it whatsoever, I can clear them up after I pop the nails out. Pop, pop, pop. There's three nails pop out. Um, rough cut this to the line. I want to see the line. Cut that out. And then siding it like this and sanding, refine that curve. I can also... If it's not perfect, refine it once I get it on the bow. You know, you sight down your bow, which is always good to make sure there's no, like, discrepancies in any tapers. But now I will have a tapered template for that. And again, you can make um, the handles in here. If it's a paddle bow, you can make the limbs. You can do anything using that method. Just a thin piece of wood for, for the template, and then a, thinner, a thin piece of wood to put between your nails and stuff. And I'll take that curve, line it up, get this part set against the back, and then just pencil those in on this and then work down to it. And that's, that's a good thing. Now I might go an extra mile. Now think of uh, the width and the thickness uh, controlling the amount of bend. It is more effective to remove thickness than it is width to adjust the amount of um, bend within that wood. It's just structurally more efficient to remove this than it is this. Um, you make more of a difference removing this than you do this. I think it's like one to four or something like that. I'm just guessing. We can use that. Now suppose you wanna, which I do, wanna remove as much material from these tips as possible. You can do it a couple ways. Um, one way would be to have the certain thickness through here keeping this perpendicular with this bow, and then removing it down the center. That's pretty cool to take a round sanding um, thing, it's not a block because it's round, and make a rounded channel in here, removing mass, removing wood from this. You can also draw a line down the center and taper it on either side, creating a triangular cross section, which in effect is removing a lot of material, but it's not removing thickness. You can picture it this way. You take just a thin piece of wood and, and don't have this going up here. Just keep it constant through here. Now when it hits that constriction, it's going to be um, hingy. There's going to be a, a wish to bend there. But suppose you made, what would you call this, like a spine down the back of just a thin piece of wood? It wouldn't have to be much. If you had a thinner piece of wood than this and had it really tall, unless it crumpled, you know, it's going to be incredibly stiff, and that's how I-beams work. And so again, I could just keep this blocky and, you know, have a lot of this extra material I don't need, or else remove it from the side without removing the actual depth down the center, or else the depth through the interior. And now that I've confused you enough with that, watch this video more than once, and it'll come. It'll come to you in your sleep. I now have a new curve template to add to my box of curves, which includes these dog bony looking things that I use to um, crown the back. Nice templates. Now, if you have a, a variety of templates for the handle, 
and you've got some templates for the tips, you know, whatever. They don't need to be constant. And for limbs, you can mix and match. Get all your templates together and say, I want to have a narrow, deep handle on this bow. Make a narrow, deep handle. Then grab the template for the limb width, taper, what have you, paddle bow. And then maybe take another one for different tips and stick it on there. It's kind of like uh, Legos, Lego bows. Enough of bows. You can never have enough of bows, but this video you are going to have an end to bows right now because I'm going to go off on a tangent, which I never do. I never ramble and I never go off on tangents. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge to sell you that goes to the UP. Dahmer man. D-O-M-O-R-E-M-A-T-H. Um, Delta Oscar Mike Oscar Romeo. Echo Mike Alpha Tango Hotel. Dahmer man. Look up his channel. It's... It's brilliant. I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. I'm going to expect you, if you're bored, to just look up Damor Math and see what he is about. It's pretty cool. Um, if in the beginning it's kind of boring, go to the three quarters mark and then see the result. Damor Math. D O M O R Math, M A T H. Have a good one. Right now, if you don't feel like making wood shavings clean your workspace because an uncluttered workspace means more motivation to work on stuff um, that is all drink your coffee make your bows look up Dahmer math